hello. Um, I'm Javier, I'm the um, computer science postdoc in the data justice uh, project. I'm going to talk about the data-driven hiring, um, the implications in social justice. Um, and I will contextualize this in the general frame, problem or issue of uh, the datification of the workplace. Um, you are all are aware that we have novel and heterogeneous type of data uh, sources, but also new ways of processing. So now we can have access to process of the nat natural language and facial analysis stuff. And also we are, there are more tools available for predictive modeling, trying to predict performance to govern risk of people. Um, so all this together is transforming the standard employment providing new means of surveillance, management, or human resources. Um, we have some extreme cases, such as these chip implants that some companies are doing for their workers. Uh, but also there are other cooler devices, such as the soci sociometric budget, that is the one um, up there. That is something like more modern stuff that you will uh, have in your t-shirt pocket on and it will track you all across the, con the company. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, technologies like sen sentinel analysis and all the field of emotional AI that is being used to, to, do, uh, to do profiling of people based on how they write or what type of things they, they say. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to focus on the hiring um, automation we have to say hire, the hiring process as a kind of funnel in which uh, people will be selected but also rejected in every stage. So well, the first one would be sourcing. This is placing advertisement in the platforms such as Facebook or LinkedIn. So um, people will see or not the available positions. We have also screening that is a kind of summarizing a pool of candidates and also sorting them. Um, to present the available people for the um, human resources staff. And also we have the, the process, the stage of the interview that is being also automated through apps that you install in your mobile phone and the phone is the one who is going to interview you and evaluate you. But also we have the selection and also I wanted to include here, this is not uh, completely including the hiring funeral, but also scheduling an activity for casting because many companies have like a pool of people that has worked for them, have been working for them in the past and they, will, they would like to hire them for the following weekend, for instance. And the technology intervening in all these parts are like audience segmentations, the same you can see in Facebook, like every type of demographic, age, gender, but also ethnic profiling, uh, political uh, thoughts and things like that. Um, also the full field of personality classification through facial recognition or sorry facial analysis and voice analysis and so on. But also the formulation of the classic personality and skill test that they used to do in the companies. Hmm? It's important to see this as a filter because um, um, the computers are rejecting people, not uh, humans. And perhaps humans are hiring, but computers are discarding a set of um, collectives. And this is important because in terms of statistical uh, metrics, uh, we can't know what is being lost in the process. Um, and precisely, those are the type of statistical metrics that can reveal inequalities um, uh, different treatment for different groups. So we only have the passing rates. Um, uh, we like to think um, now in profiles of people, like kind of augmented profiles, because you upload your CV or you fill out your fields in LinkedIn and other networks, but there will be more information that you will expect because they will use the tools to inform demographic information that perhaps you haven't shared, but also you will be evaluated in terms of how stable as you are as a person. Like, um, if you click in a lot of job offers, they will know, so they will know that you will probably leave the company, and this will be one of the inputs of, of the tools. 
Also, the wall field of emotional AI um, is here. So this is, for instance, the output of the high view app that um, do this automatic interview using your phone. And it can evaluate your level of um, how extroverted you are, and then compared to the average in the company. Um, so this brings us to the candidate pre-assessment. This is some kind of interview before the interview that will filter a lot of people. So um, the humans will be centered only in a um, reduced set of persons. And more or less, all the tools work like extracting data and creating a kind of profile and then having a kind of reference of what is a best employee uh, that can be like uh, defined in, by humans, or also inferred using the historical records of the company or uh, the profile of all the people in, working in the company. For instance, this is why Pymetrics does. They have some neuroscience-based games and they will tell you to play to some of those games. For instance, you have to maximize the number of uh, dollars you get um, by plumping a balloon, but the balloon is going to explode at some point. So you, you can save the money, so you can play, they, they want to evaluate the, the level of risk you want to assume to maximize profit. So then you will have a score in this category, and after playing all the games, you will have all these scores. Um, this is the prototype of the profile of a computer engineering according to this company. So they, like, they, they should be able of learning a lot, having attention, and have a delayed gratification um, characteristic. That is the contrary of the people from marketing. If you see the documentation, the marketing people doesn't like uh, delayed gratification. They want to sell and that's all, huh? as soon as possible. So this makes sense. <laughs> Um, so, there are a lot of issues, as you can imagine, in all these processes. First is the information asymmetry, because the company is having more and more information about you, even more information that you know, because you, perhaps you didn't question your level of extraversion. Uh, uh, extraversion. Mm -hmm. um, also, there is a um, the humanization process, of course, if you lose the interaction with the people. This is an example of a um, chatbot that is being used to, to filter candidates. So the chatbot will ask some basic questions like, are you able to carry a certain amount of weight? Are you able of working during the weekends? And things like that. Hmm? This is me, a chatbot. And this company makes a special emphasis in the fact that the, is, uh, this chatbot is especially kind. Um, also, we have the privacy issues. So, um, uh, all the workers has to contribute to this knowledge base that will be used to hire future people. So we have current employees, but also the candidates' privacy issues. Also, as Lina mentioned, we have all the general issues of translating all these US-made tools to the other context. So we import their understanding of discriminations, um, the, the legal restrictions. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have all these topics that you are perfectly aware related to automatic discrimination, um, all the ProPublica publications and so on. Mm -hmm. So some companies are claiming that they are able of ending with discrimination at work, at work um, by fixing uh, bias in hiring. <coughs> and this is something we have been working, um, uh, Lina um, and me with, together with a legal scholarship, trying to have like a technical, social, and um, legal point of view of this, what this means, what these claims means, sorry. So um, what this means is that, um, well, the US-centric approach, so for instance, Pymetric that claims literally predicting talents through success bias-free. Huh? They have this um, US understanding of, uh, well, the, this disparate threatment and impact that is somehow compatible with the European legislations, for instance. So you, but um, also they have their own definition of what a protected group means. 
uh, that is very related to the history of the US. And also we have a specific statistical metrics of what discrimination means. This, me this four-fifth rule means that more or less the passing rates of all the protected groups has been the same at the end of the process. Um, of course, they don't have the right to explanation le legis uh, legislation, so uh, they can use very complex statistical models that doesn't need to feature for interpretability or transparency. Mm -hmm. So the strategies the companies are adopting are um, the same that we are seeing in other academic jobs. Like Anti-classification means that they remove all the information that can reveal the group membership of a person, like not only uh, explicit variables, but also proxy to those variables. Hmm? Um, classification parity is just to comply with this uh, legal um, requirement. And calibration means that you test that none of the input variables can reveal the group membership of the person. For instance, the uh, high view is analyzing all the information you have in the camera, so it can use the skin tone. So this would be a proxy for ethnic group. Um, so we are discussing how this understanding is, uh, the limitation of this understanding of what, is, what the anti-discrimination measures uh, mean. Um, the first problem we have is the lack of information. We have been working with the marketing staff, uh, but also with patents and also in one case with the code of the software because uh, Pymetrics has published the auditing software in, in GitHub. But we don't have access to real customer use cases. We don't know which companies are using the products. We know like three or four of them that they um, advertise in, the, in their website, but um, we don't know how they use the tools, which features uh, are being used. Um, how they communicate um, to the employees they are going to use their data, um, things like that. And also we find abstract definitions of fairness, like the previous one, bias-free. So that this is quite abstract. Um, so we have the premise that there is no uh, universal understanding of justice and discrimination. So this is a problem to uh, guarantee um, bias-free methods, but also there are not uh, consensus in the statistical definitions or computational definitions of fairness. Eh? So um, this is one of the limitations of those claims. Also the inherent limitations of data-driven hiring, um, if you only build models in past data of your company, you will likely reflect the past behavior of the company. And also, the, the, this definition of who is the best employee is very problematic because it is best with respect to, to with what criteria. So um, those are two uh, inherent problems. Also, we find the problems with group description, but also identification because in many of the European countries, uh, this sensitive information is not allowed to be gathered by the company. So how will you evaluate that you will have all these uh, different groups? Um, Hairview says that they infer the demographics of the people based on facing analysis, but this is also quite problematic. Um, also, we have, again, the general problem of incorporating these tools right into the market of the uh, UK in, in the case of the paper we are working on. Um, we don't even have this four-fifth rule, and we don't have the uh, information available to do this uh, statistical test. So, um, what does it mean here? And also um, provided that we have things like the right to explanation and the right to have a human um, in the loop, what all of these are li uh, real limitations to the applicability of these tools and systems. So um, I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.